In many perilous situations, individuals have only a few seconds to determine their best action plan. Often, there is no time to contemplate before plunging into a rescue effort. This is especially true for professional rescuers, who understand that any delay, even brief, in developing a rescue strategy could result in a fatality. In such urgent times, there is no chance to consider a detailed, long-term strategy. Actions are usually executed almost instantly, and the risks to oneself are only realized afterward. When tasked with the challenge of saving another person's life, each individual must swiftly decide whether to act immediately, ignoring personal dangers, or to momentarily pause to create a plan that might ensure everyone's safety. Occasionally, such hesitations can tragically lead to the loss of another's life. This responsibility of deciding becomes even more burdensome when the person in peril is a loved one. Driving the rescuer to act with even less concern for their own safety. This same innate urge to protect is also seen in animals. Pets, for example, show remarkable loyalty and bravery, often rushing to their owner's rescue without a second thought for their own safety. But what about wild animals in similar circumstances? Would they jump into action or retreat from danger? We delve into this fascinating topic in today's narrative. Our tale starts in a remote village encircled by a dense forest inhabited by tigers, where a young boy relished his life close to nature. However, when his parents were presented with attractive job offers in the city, the family decided to move. The boy found the urban environment, its dust, noise, and constant hustle, extremely distressing and he pledged to return to his peaceful village and the serene tiger forest once he had the chance. As time passed, the boy matured into a man, married, and fathered a daughter. Although he still dreamed of returning to his village, he recognized the limited opportunities it presented for his young daughter and reluctantly put his dreams on hold. Years flew by, and his daughter grew up, got married, and had a child of her own, with no remaining ties to the city. The man suggested to his wife that they move from the urban turmoil to a quieter life. Possibly closer to his beloved village, his wife, ever supportive, agreed without hesitation to begin this new chapter of their lives together later that same year. Once they were married, the couple moved to the husband's family village, which was deeply hidden within a forest known for its tigers. They settled into the charming, old house previously occupied by his parents. The family quickly adjusted to their new environment, seldom traveling to the city except to sell surplus farm produce. In his spare time, the husband liked to take extensive walks in the forest, collecting mushrooms and berries. These, too, were gathered in large quantities and sold in the city. During one such excursion, the rustling of the dense underbrush drew his attention. Carefully separating the foliage, he found a small, seemingly fragile kitten lying in the grass. The kitten, which was extremely weak and barely moved its head, seemed to have been alone in the forest for days, likely searching for its mother and some food. Upon closer examination, the husband saw the distinct tufts on the kitten's ears and its short tail and realized it was not an ordinary kitten but a young lynx. Despite the lynx's wild nature, he was moved by compassion for the vulnerable animal. He carefully picked her up held her close to his chest, and brought her home. There, he prepared a special nutritious milk formula and fed the young lynx until she was full. After feeding, the little lynx curled up in a corner of the room and quickly fell asleep. As he watched her sleep, the man was conflicted about what to do next. Releasing her back into the forest seemed like a death sentence as she was still too young to survive on her own. After discussing the situation with his wife, they agreed to care for the lynx at their home until she was capable of living independently in the wild. In the following months, the baby lynx grew noticeably stronger and healthier, flourishing on the nourishment they provided. She spent her days playing and sleeping in the yard, clearly enjoying her surroundings. Almost every weekend, their daughter and granddaughter came from the city, appreciating the village's fresh air and peace. The young girl quickly became attached to the lynx spending entire weekends playing with her new animal companion. Initially, the parents and grandparents were cautious and fully aware of the risks associated with a wild animal. However, as they watched the lynx's behavior, 
It became evident that she showed no signs of aggression and seemed well adapted to her new life among humans. Despite the occasional intense stares she directed towards the chicken coop, which revealed her inherent predatory instincts, the lynx generally exhibited behavior reminiscent of a domestic cat, showing no aggression towards family members or visitors. This hunting instinct appeared to be the only remnant of her wild ancestry. As she adapted seamlessly into the family's everyday life, over a year, the once tiny cub matured into a magnificent and predominantly gentle lynx. Despite her wild roots, she remained affectionate and was often seen accompanying the man on tranquil walks through the forest. She consistently chose to return home with him rather than stay in the woods. The following weekend, when their daughter and her family were visiting, the man suggested a family picnic in the forest. They discovered an ideal spot in a clearing spacious enough to arrange a comfortable seating area. By noon, the family had comfortably settled at the site, with the man tending to the barbecue grill and the women organizing the camp table. Suddenly, the peaceful atmosphere was shattered by a child's piercing scream, which immediately drew everyone's attention. They turned to witness a terrifying sight, their little girl had fallen to the ground. Alarmingly close to a large, venomous viper in a defensive posture, it appeared that the child had accidentally stepped on the snake while playing, prompting it to ready itself to strike. Although the adults were too far away to reach her quickly, they hurried towards her in a frantic effort to help. In the fleeting moments it took for the snake to approach the girl, the lynx, alerted by the scream, leapt into action without a second's delay, ignoring the peril she faced by engaging with a venomous snake. She swiftly seized the reptile by its tail and pulled it away from the child. At that moment, the parents grabbed the girl and moved to a safe distance, hearts racing as they observed the intense confrontation between the lynx and the snake. The snake, fighting back, bit the lynx several times. Unfazed, the lynx ferociously attacked the snake with her teeth. After a tense few minutes, the lynx triumphed, the snake was subdued. However, the toll was clear as the now poisoned lynx staggered and began to lick her wounds. Throughout the harrowing event, the young girl cried ceaselessly while cradled in her mother's embrace. Initially, her tears stemmed from fear for her own well-being, but later, they flowed for her courageous lynx who had endangered her own life to protect the girl. As they watched, the family felt a mix of relief for the child's safety and worry for the wounded lynx. Hoping she would survive the venomous snake bites, deep in the forest, the girl mustered her remaining strength and dashed through the underbrush, her tears blending with cries for her pet lynx. Despite her frantic calls, the lynx did not return. The surrounding adults realized with sorrow that the wild cat had ventured into the woods to face her demise. A noble gesture likely motivated by the severity of her wounds, what began as a joyous picnic turned dismal casting a shadow over everyone's spirits. Disheartened and no longer in the mood for their barbecue, the group decided to pack up and return home. Through it all, the girl was inconsolable, mourning the loss of her cherished lynx and unable to imagine life without her faithful friend. As the weekend concluded, the family headed back to the city, acutely aware of the emptiness in their yard where the lynx once roamed energetically. The head of the household wandered about gloomily his gaze often drifting towards the forest, holding onto a faint hope of spotting his pet. He knew the lynx had sustained several poisonous bites in a recent skirmish with a snake. Wounds that were typically fatal. With a heavy heart, he entered the barn, bracing himself for nothing more than lingering memories. To his surprise, he found the lynx in a dark corner, frail but alive, having miraculously found her way back, overcome with happiness. He quickly called his daughter to relay the joyous news that their beloved pet had returned. Much to his granddaughter's delight, in the ensuing days, the man dedicated himself to the lynx's recovery, carefully feeding and tending to her. Slowly, the lynx regained her vigor and resumed her usual playful behavior in the yard. The girl made regular weekend visits from the city, and their joyful interactions continued as if no dark cloud had ever passed over their lives. The frightening encounter with the snake gradually faded into a distant memory. Everyone decided to overlook certain details, 
choosing instead to focus on the lynx's brave deed that rescued the young girl. This narrative highlights the remarkable resilience and profound connections that exist between people and their animal companions. What are your thoughts on this story of courage and endurance? Please leave your comments below. Now, we have another engaging story. Let's proceed to the next one. Brooke was a charming young girl who enjoyed the loving atmosphere provided by her family. One day, her seafaring father, known for bringing home unique souvenirs from his journeys, gave her a remarkable gift, a small raven chick. This was not just a simple token but a duty. Taking care of the raven taught Brooke about care and the responsibilities it entails. Sadly, Brooke's life ended prematurely due to unforeseen events, and she died when she was just six years old. At her funeral, a touching and almost miraculous occurrence took place. The raven that Brooke had nurtured sat mournfully on her casket, a moving symbol of their connection, from a young age. Brooke was known for her lively and autonomous nature. She enjoyed spending time in her garden in the picturesque village of Cornwall, UK, where she would become engrossed in the surrounding natural beauty, watching the local flora and the insects that danced around it. Brooke was frequently seen climbing trees, her knees bruised and her clothes torn, yet her happiness and zest for life remained unscathed. Her days were filled with simple joys like observing fish swimming in the streams and birds flying overhead. While her mother managed the household, Brooke eagerly anticipated her father's return from the sea. His voyages were lengthy, often several months long, but they were always worthwhile because of the incredible and peculiar gifts he brought back. These gifts, shells from Caribbean beaches, elaborate sculptures from the Middle East, and various books and toys from Europe and America were not merely presents but tales of adventure that Brooke treasured and shared with her peers. On the day her father returned from a two-month trip, Brooke excitedly waited at the garden gate. When she finally saw him approaching, her excitement overflowed, and she ran to him, embracing him tightly. However, she quickly realized he did not have a gift in his hands as usual. Instead, he knelt down and gently placed a tiny twitching baby raven into her palm, he explained that the raven was now her charge, a trust to teach her about nurturing and connection. This poignant tale of Brooke and her raven highlights the profound lessons of love, responsibility, and truly significant gifts in life. Initially puzzled, Brooke soon experienced a moment of clarity and understanding. Brooke's face, serene as she lay in the casket, was a stark contrast to the turmoil that surrounded her passing. As the ceremony proceeded, the attendees remained oblivious to the raven's desperate cries and gestures outside the funeral home. Brooke had consciously embraced the substantial responsibility of nurturing a young raven in recent weeks. She had devoted all her time and energy to its care, feeding it and even teaching it several tricks. Known for their keen intelligence, the raven quickly learned everything Brooke taught, eagerly absorbing the lessons. As time went on, the once small chick grew and soon mastered the skill of flight. Brooke would often take it outside, watching with joy as it flew across the sky. Despite gaining the ability to fly freely, the raven always came back to Brooke, demonstrating the strong bond they had established. Their time together, however, took a heartbreaking turn one day. While relaxing in the garden under a large tree, Brooke suddenly stopped breathing and clutched her throat in distress. The raven's loud squawks alerted Brooke's parents who, upon seeing their daughter in trouble, rushed to her aid. They quickly carried her to their car and drove to the nearest hospital, leaving behind the distressed raven. From its perch in the tree, the raven watched as the car vanished down the street. It followed and entered Brooke's hospital room through an open window. The medical team worked urgently to assess Brooke, performing scans and checking her lungs to diagnose the issue. Despite their efforts, the lack of oxygen had caused irreversible damage. Brooke's parents, overcome with sorrow, were present when the doctors pronounced her deceased. Outside the hospital room, the raven continued to peck at the window and squawk loudly, attempting to draw attention, but the hospital staff dismissed it, considering the hospital an unsuitable place for a bird. Heartbroken, Brooke's parents returned home with the raven trailing behind, still causing a commotion. 
Engulfed in grief, they ignored the bird as they began the somber task of arranging the funeral. On the day of the funeral, despite the raven's persistent attempts to capture their attention, it remained unnoticed. Family and friends gathered, mourning the premature loss of young Brooke, their tears flowing as they viewed her peaceful expression in the open casket. Throughout the service, the raven's attempts to be acknowledged went unheeded. The raven remained close by, a silent guardian. Reflecting the deep connection it had forged with the girl who had shown it such profound love and care, as the mourners assembled around Brooke's coffin, which held her fragile, doll-like form, an intense wave of grief filled the air. The scene resembled a heartrending portrait, with Brooke's youthful, innocent face eliciting a profound sense of loss. Many of those present were deeply affected, their tears flowing freely as they gently touched her cheek and softly kissed her. Offering their last goodbyes, in a surprising twist, a lone raven was observed from a tree nearby, its presence both unusual and touching, it occasionally took to the skies, flying over the mournful assembly and issuing a sharp cry before returning to its lookout, Brooke's parents observed with concern as the bird swooped near the coffin, examining Brooke's body as if to communicate something, the raven's actions were atypical marked by anxious hopping around the coffin and emitting a curious buzzing coo that seemed almost questioning. Moments later, the raven started to delicately peck at Brooke, as if trying to awaken her from her eternal rest. This distressing scene suggested a profound bond between the bird and the girl, indicative of a mutual mourning. Despite the initial shock and the parent's attempts to drive the bird away as it pecked at Brooke's lips, the raven continued, driven by an unknown force. As Brooke's father moved towards the casket, trying to disperse the insistent bird, it finally retreated with a reluctant flap and a squawk, yet it kept a vigilant watch from above. When the crowd's focus returned to Brooke, a collective gasp spread among the mourners, resting on her lap was a walnut-sized object, an egg, likely from an insect, which had accidentally lodged in her throat. This object had fallen from the tree above where Brooke had been discovered unconscious in her garden. Taken to the hospital, the medical team, concentrating solely on her lungs, had overlooked the real cause of her distress. They had failed to check her throat, and the lack of oxygen had led to a coma, resulting in her premature declaration of death. In a miraculous twist of fate, Brooke began to breathe shallowly. Her astonished parents embraced her, their tears now blending with joy and relief. In that extraordinary moment, it became apparent that the raven had known something profound. The persistent pecking of the bird was not a gruesome act, rather, it was a desperate bid to draw the mourner's attention to Brooke's critical situation. In its unique way, the raven had been attempting to deliver this crucial information to Brooke's parents, who only now realized the bird's true intentions. It appeared that the raven had been acting as a guardian angel, vigilantly watching over Brooke and eventually playing a key role in uncovering the reality of her condition. The bird had focused its pecking on Brooke's face and mouth, instinctively trying to clear an obstruction. Remarkably, this action by the bird provided just enough time to save Brooke's life. What are your thoughts on this extraordinary incident? How do you think you would have reacted if you were at Brooke's funeral and witnessed such an astonishing event? As always, we love to engage with our readers, so please be sure to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. We look forward to hearing from you. That's all for today's story. Please subscribe and give a thumbs up. See you next time.